Hello friends, welcome to today's machine learning class and in this class we will see a general approach for deriving confidence intervals and also we will see the most popular central limit theorem that is CLT and that will come under the chapter evaluating hypothesis of second unit. Uh, the general approach for deriving confidence interval is also one of the important question from second unit and you can expect this from 5 more questions uh, from the university examination. To derive the confidence interval estimate is specific observed numerical value which is used to, to estimate the unknown population parameter. Okay, first we have to observe uh, the numerical value which is used to, to estimate the population parameter. So, here we need to estimate two important things first one is point estimate and second one is interval estimate. Okay, the point estimate is nothing but a single numerical value which is used to, to estimate an unknown population parameter. Here the numerical value is nothing but a single mean which is used to, to estimate the population mean. Okay, this is the point estimate a single numerical value which is normally the mean value of population mean value of population mu okay and the interval estimate that is the second one which is a range of value used to, to estimate an unknown population parameter okay the range of value the range between the lower confidence limit to upper confidence limit this is the width of confidence interval right the interval estimate of population parameters are called as confidence interval that is the range of value lies between the lower confidence limit to upper confidence limit. And next let us see uh, how to compute the confidence interval. To compute confidence interval that is the mean we need to concentrate on three important things. First one is the point estimate that is the numerical value this is nothing but the mean value. And the second one is confidence interval. Confidence interval means the interval between the lower limit to upper limit, upper point of limit. And that is multiplied by the margin of errors, the margin of errors. So, that is computed by using the variance of population divided by sample size. We, we can otherwise write as sigma square by n, both are same. Okay. Here, the lower bound which is equal to x bar minus z into sigma by n root of n and the upper bound is x bar plus z into sigma by root n. Okay. If it is lower bound then we can minus these values that is the confident in interval and the margin of error. When come to upper bound we, we have to add these two values. Okay. See this area and this area right and the next one is the general process of deriving confidence interval which includes the following steps. So, we have to follow four important steps to achieve this confidence intervals ok. First one we need to identify the population parameter population parameter that is the entire population entire population that to be estimated for example, error d of h that is the true error. Entire population should be identified first and the second one is we need to define the estimator y that is the sample. From this entire population we randomly select some examples and we, we have to define a sample. Okay, this is error s of h that is the sample error. It is described to choose a minimum variance unbiased estimator. The variance should be minimum. See in the sample the variance should be minimum and there should not be any bias in the estimator. Okay, that should be almost correct. And the third one is determine the probability distribution dy that governs the estimator y which including its mean and variance and this is most important. Here 
we need to determine the probability distribution dy. dy means distribution of probability that governs the estimator y. This is nothing but the sample, okay, which includes mean and variance. That is, if the mean and variance of sample that should be almost equal to the mean and variance of the entire population. And the last step is determine the n percentage confidence interval, n percentage confidence interval by defining the thresholds lower bound to upper bound. This is the lower limit and this is the upper limit, okay, such that the n percentage of the mass in the probability distribution dy falls between L and U. For example, if this is a bell curve and the probability should lies between this is L and this is U between any one of this range. Okay. Confidence interval here within a normal distribution x, x may be a randomly taken variable from the entire population that may lies under the Gaussian distribution with respect to mu and standard deviation, then we will get this bell curve. We will get the bell curve okay. and within this bell curve that falls certain likelihoods of the standard error which is defined by the sigma okay. and within one unit of error see this is one unit of error, this is one sigma right. Well, there is a 68 percent likelihood of the true mean of the population that falls within that section. That is if it is 68 percent of all outcomes then the mu which lies between minus sigma to plus sigma. Okay. This is otherwise called as first standard deviation first standard deviation of the population mu. Okay. Then when come to second and standard deviation the population mean will lies between minus 2 sigma to plus 2 sigma this particular range this is 95 percent confidence. And when come to third standard intervals that is sta third standard deviation the sigma mean value mu value will lies between minus 3 sigma to plus 3 sigma then this is 99 percent confidence interval. See when come to here we can easily uh, identify that the 68 percent of mu value will lies between this range okay, that lies between minus 1 sigma to plus 1 sigma this is the mu value okay. and when come to 95 percent the mu value will lies between minus 2 sigma to plus 2 sigma okay. and when come to 99 that is 99.7 percent the sigma value mu value will lies between minus 3 sigma to plus 3 sigma. Okay. Now, let us see one problem uh, in confidence interval for single population mean. The problem is a random sample of n equal to 50 persons showed a mean average that is daily intake of dairy products which is equal to 750 grams that is the 50 persons can take daily 750 grams of dairy products with the standard deviation of 35 grams. This is what our problem and from this we need to find the 95 percent and 99 percent confidence interval for the population average mu. Okay, this is what the given problem. So, we know already the population mean mu equal to x bar plus or minus z into sigma divided by root n okay. and the given values are x bar which is equal to 750 gram okay, x bar which is equal to 750 gram and n is the sample size which is equal to 50 and sigma equal to 35 and from the z table we can take the z 95 percent which is equal to 1.96 and 99 percent is 2.5. Five seven six. Okay, these are the values we have already given in the problem itself. Now we need to find the interval estimate of 95% confidence. 
okay, we can substitute these values into this formula then we can get 756 plus or minus 1.96 into 35 divided by root 50. Okay. Now, we get 7.46.30 less than or equal to mu less than or equal to 7.67 uh, sorry 7.65.7 grams and this is for 95 percent confidence interval. And now we try to estimate the 99 percent confidence here. 756 plus or minus 2.576 into 35 divided by 50, isn't it? Okay, now for 99 percent, the z value is 2.576, right? Now the population mean will lies between 7 uh, sorry uh, 743.23 and 768.77 the mean, mean value will lies between these two limits. Okay, this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit. right? And next we will move to the central limit theorem which is one of the popular theorem in the statistics. And this explains the distribution of sample means that is the sample which is taken from the entire population that is randomly we can pick the samples the sample size should be greater than or equal to 30 right which approximates the normal distribution as the sample size gets larger if we have more number of samples then regardless of population's distribution okay and if we take more number of samples that is s1 s2 etc up to sn then the the average of all these mean of this sample that approximately equal to the mean of this population right so this is what central limit theorem explains the sample size that should be greater than or equal to 30 here the average of sample means and standard deviation that is average of sample mean and standard deviation will equal to the population mean and standard deviation that is mu and standard deviation of population mean okay here sufficiently large sample size can predict the characteristics of populations more accurately right suppose if we take the entire population if we take entire population from this entire population i can pick a sample that is 30 examples randomly and which is nothing but S1, which is nothing but S1. The range is S1 to S30 for example. Okay. And now I need to compute the S1 bar, that is the average. Okay. For example, X1 bar, X1 bar. And now I can randomly select another set of examples and this is nothing but S2 that is the sample 2. Here also I am having those numbers and now the mean is X2 bar. Likewise, I have to take S n number of samples from this population with the same size. The size is 30 approximately. Okay. The, the number should be that is the size should be common for all the samples that is important okay and here also i am going to find x n bar x n bar now the summation of all these things that is the average of all these uh, mean value the average of all these mean value that should be approximately equal to the entire population's mean value right and the standard deviation of all the samples should also be approximately equal to the standard deviation of the entire population. Okay, if we take more number of samples, then the accuracy will be almost equal. The accuracy will also get increased simply the sample accuracy as well as the entire population's accuracy. So, this is nothing but the central limit theorem. 
to estimate the mean mu of the distribution that is to estimate the mean of the entire population p governing the y this is the mean of a sample. y i is mean of sample ok. We calculate the sample mean y bar n which is equal to 1 by n, n is the size of sample, size of sample summation of i equal to 1 to n y i, y i means the mean of all the samples. mean of for example ith sample mean of ith sample that is yi that means we need to collect more and more number of samples and we need to compute the uh, mean of that sample and finally we have to take the average of entire samples mean then that will be approximately equal to the mean of entire population ok the theorem states that the probability distribution governing y bar n this is y bar n this particular one that is the mean of entire population that approaches a normal distribution. See once we did all these things then that should be automatically comes under the normal distribution that is the bell shaped curve ok as n tends to infinity. When if we take more number of samples that is infinite number of samples from the population from the entire population we have to take more and more samples of the same size for example 30 samples 30 examples in a sample ok regardless of the distribution that governs the underlying random variable y i and the means of distribution governing y bar n which approaches p under the standard deviation approach sigma divided by root n. Sigma is nothing but the standard deviation of sample and root n is nothing but the sample size ok and these should be approximately equal to the population's standard deviation and the population's mean mu ok. So, this is nothing but the central limit theorem. And this is the theorem of uh, this CLT here consider a set of independent identically distributed random variables y1 to yn ok. A set of independent and identically distributed random variables all the variables are different to each other and governed by arbitrarily probability distribution with mean mu and finite variance sigma square which is equal to y bar n which is equal to 1 by n summation of i equal to 1 to n y i. Here y bar is nothing but mean this is mean that is the mean of population entire population which is equal to y by n this n is nothing but the size of sample. Sample size random variable size and the summation of y i that is the mean of ith sample mean of ith sample ok and then n is infinity n tends to infinity that is if we are having infinity number of samples then the distribution governing is y bar n minus mu divided by sigma by root n ok approaches a normal distribution with 0 mean and standard deviation which is equal to 1 right. So, if we do all those things then any variable we have taken from the entire population that will come under this normal distribution ok. From the evaluating hypothesis up to this we have seen a general approach for deriving confidence intervals after that we have seen one problem for this deriving confidence intervals and then we have seen the central limit theorem right. For more information please go through your textbook thank you.